Hello guys and welcome to the professional custom reporter section. This one will be pretty short, there is not much to do, it is really easy and fast to create custom reporter with Playwright. So we will start with the empty project, just in case some students are watching directly this section and not the previous ones. But you can use any of the projects used before in the course or any of your own Playwright tests. It does not matter, it will work ok. This code I'm going to show you will work with any Playwright project. So again, I have an empty project, so quickly I will type npm in it with flag yes. This will create a new, basically, node project. So now I'm gonna install Playwright tests. And again, feel free to skip it, do not create empty project if you want, you can use any of your Playwright projects, it really doesn't matter. So now, mpx Playwright install, just in case you haven't done it. And as you can see, it's basically downloading and reinstalling all the browsers with the latest versions. And again, it might take some time, it little bit takes on your internet connection, but you already know. So let's just wait until this is downloaded. And basically the next steps are very simple. Playwright allows us to create our own reporter file, which basically contains some data about the tests and the suite. And a lot of these data are coming directly from the Playwright, so they are exposed to us, so we don't need to use inbuilt reporters, we can create our own, which I'm going to show you. And they are basically giving us a lot of data, and many times you don't need that much. So I'm going to show you how to create elegant professional custom reporter, which only takes the important data, and we will store it into the files in the JSON format, so you can take them and use them for your CI CD tool or your monitoring tools because most of them are basically working with a JSON format. And basically Playwright gives us everything we need and we will also need one more library to write files into the JSON. That's also I'm going to show you and it's basically very, very easy. And well, let's just wait until it downloads. Again, my internet is not that fast, so we just need to wait. And that's it. So let me just now create a sample test. So I'm going to create a test directory. So I'm going to create a folder called tests. And here I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to name it, for example, sample.spec.ts. And let's just not create our own test. I'm just gonna take something from the Playwright documentation. So it's a little bit faster. Again, you can use any of your own tests. But for this simple demonstration, I'm just gonna copy paste this simple test. So that's it. We should be ready. Let me just run the tests so we make sure that everything is working so let's type mpx playwright test and as you can see our sample spec is working so that's nice but now let's take a look at the reason why we are working with this section and that is our custom reporter so basically I um, will go into the root of the project, which is basically here, and I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to name it reporter.ts. And let me just close the terminal for now. And what we need to do? At the top we need to import the reporter from Playwright Tests Reporter. This will give us an opportunity to create our own. So import reporter, which is an official Playwright class built in the Playwright. And now let's add Playwright test slash reporter. And the second library we need to import is fs, 
because we will be writing and creating a text document with the information from the tests. So I'm going to import everything as fs from fs library. Now let's create a class called, for example, custom reporter or my reporter. So class my reporter. Again, the name here doesn't matter. You can give it any name you want, but it cannot be named, for example, reporter, because the reporter is already a reserved class built inside Playwright. So the name needs to be unique. And we need to implement, and we want to implement reporter. And now we have four basic functions on begin, on end, on test begin and on test end. And each of these functions can basically work with some of the data coming from the playwright. So let me show you. It might sound a little bit complicated, but don't worry, it's actually really, really easy. So I'm gonna start with on begin, and as you already see, it will automatically give us some options of which functions are available in this class because we are implementing the reporter interface which contains all of these functions. And on the begin, we want to give it access to the suite. Basically, we are telling our custom reporter, hey, we want to have access to suite object, which is inside the reporter, and it basically contains all the metadata about our test suite. And now we want to simply console log. And what we want to log? Let's say we want to log the number of tests which, tests which are being executed. So we can give it some description, for example, execution of, and now let's give it a function. So suite all test dot length and Oh, sorry, this should be, of course, inside here. And tests. So basically, at the beginning of the test execution, we will console log the number of tests which are being executed. In our case, it should be one. So next step is also to create on end. And this is basically the end phase, which will trigger the code after all the tests are successfully or not successfully executed. And in this case, we want to console log, for example, the status of the tests. So on end, we now need to access to results. Again, results is just a playwright object, which contains the data about the tests, which basically are executed in the test. And now we want a console.log. And here we can give it a description, for example, execution finished with status of, and again, let's now provide it with the variable. And the variable is in the results. And so it's not results, it should be just result. I made a typo, it is result, not result, that status. And save it. And that's pretty much it. Now we have our on begin and on end covered. So first we will basically display how many tests are being executed. And at the end, we want to know if the test passed or some of them failed. So. Now let's move deeper and now we want to create a function which will basically trigger the code on every test begin. And as you can see, the function is named on test begin. And here we need to access the object of test. And what we can do now, we can, for example, display into the console which of the test is being executed. So in case you have one test, it will execute and display the name of your one test. But if you have a complete suite of, let's say, 10 tests, it will always trigger the display of the name before the test starts one by one. 
So again, let's do console.log. And here let's display executing or execution of, for example, test.title started. So this text can be basically modified by you. I am just giving you a fairly common example, but you can type here whatever you want. You can also provide it with more than one console logs. Again, it's up to you. So now here comes the important part and that is extracting the test and results data, which we will later use in store into the files. So the function is called on test end. And here we need to access to test and of course result. So I'm going to start with the first variable and that is called, for example, time or execution time. And here basically I want to take the result and I want to take the variable or the value of duration. So this basically tells me how many milliseconds this test or the execution run. Then I'm going to create, for example, data and this will be an object. And here I'm going to specify all of the like data from the test, if I can say it like this. And the first one is basically the title of the test. So I'm going to create test and I'm going to give it a value of test.title. Next, we want to extract the status. So status will be from the result. And of course, the value is status. Next, we can provide it with the execution time. So I'm going to create a variable execution time and the value will be from the exit time. And don't forget to put the comma here. And last but not least, we want to provide it with the errors. And of course, they come again from the result. And the value is errors. And that's pretty much it. We have our functions ready. And as you can see, it's really nothing complicated. What we're doing here, we are just extracting some specific data from the playwright reporter object because if you console log the simple reporter, it will basically gives us like hundreds of info about the test, which is not important. It will be very large JSON. And basically this is making our JSON only four lines long with all the important data which you want. And if you are, for example, having some monitoring in Kibana or some other tool, you can simply take this data from your runs and display them based on if they're passed or not. And you will have nice monitoring, nice visualizations about your failed and passed tests, which is very, very nice. So few final steps. Now down here, we want to basically take this data, stringify them and then write them inside JSON file. Again, very simple trick. Let me show you. I'm going to create a variable and name it data to string, for example. And here we will call it JSON stringify. And we want to stringify the data, which is this object. So you want to take this. And now we want to give it value of null and two. And what this does is basically putting not everything on the single line, but putting them on the first line, second line, third and fourth line. And for that, we can use this trick. And not sure when this variable go. Oh, I'm out of the, it should be down here. Sorry, my mistake. Next step is, for example, the console log data. So you will see it in the console. So we can console log data to string. And now the final step is to write it inside the file. So for that, we will use the function fs, which we have imported 
from the top. And FS again, it's a standard node library for manipulating with the files on your machine. So we will use function write file sync. And here we can create a name, for example, test result dot json. And of course, the data source is data to string. And save it. And of course, final piece of the puzzle is always to export our reporter. So export default my reporter. And that's pretty much it. Now, the final step we need to do is to run it and see how it works. So open terminal and mpx playwright test. And now let's just edit the flag of reporter. And the value is reporter.ts, which is the name of our file here in the root of the project. And hit enter. And we have an error, so let me just check. It will probably be uh, some typo. And I already see the problem. And let me close the terminal. And basically here at the top, we are providing with only with suit, but there is a small catch. With the latest version of Playwright, you also need to provide it with the second value, which is name of config. Even though we are not using any information directly from config here in the functions, it needs to be provided into the function itself. And this is a little bit catch, which some of the people can be a little bit tricky. As you can see, I also forget it here in this demonstration. So now it should be fixed. So let's run the test again. And now, as you can see, our tests are running. And here you can see the console results. We have execution of one test, execution of basic test started. Basic test is the test here. As you can see, it's called basic test. Now you can see the JSON with values and we have basic test, status passed, number of milliseconds it took to run. And as you can see, there are no errors since our test passed. And the final basically message is execution finished with status of passed. And as you can see, the most important part is here because it will automatically generate this test results.json. And if you open it, you can see we have this nice JSON with all the test data. And like I said previously, you can take this JSON and you can provide it to your monitoring systems or to some reporting tools. And you can extract this data and create your nice reports. So that's pretty much it. Just a quick recapitulation. You need these four functions on begin, on end, on test begin and on test end, where you basically give it some information. It's so it's basically readable for you and for other people. Here you can extract all data you need. And again, you can, for example, remove this and you can just leave it title and status. If you want to keep it simplified, again, it's up to you. Here, this line of code will basically make your JSON so each of these values is on a separate line. This is a very good trick. And then we are just using the FS library just to create this JSON file at the beginning of each test run. So that's it. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the Q&A section. I'm going to put this together and make it into the source code and I'm going to upload it into the lessons. So don't worry if you don't want to follow up and you just want to copy and paste it from the source code, you will be able to do it. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the custom reporting. And let's move on to the next section. So see you there.